Hey everyone, Eric Allen here, founder of Planiversity, bringing you a demo this week on how to use the Planiversity service. You know, one of the things that occurred to me was that in all the talk about how great the service is, one of the things that I failed to do a lot of times is just show people exactly why it's so cool. You know, I'm always telling you we've got this great feature, we're so much better than the competitors, you know, this, this service is perfect for travel planning, but there isn't really a video yet that I've produced that actually shows you step-by-step -step on how to go through the process yes I've released a video in the past of how to use it but now I actually want to go through and kind of walk through the process as if I'm planning myself to take a trip and why it is that certain features are the way they are how easy it is to use and why you might want to use some of the things so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull up the website and this is what you're gonna see when you actually come to the plan diversity page okay now I tried to lay out a, uh, a design all throughout the website that is super simple to use, something that's very easy to understand. It's easy on the eyes. It just walks you through the process step by step, taking out most of the guesswork. You know, I'm, I'm much like most of you that when I actually go to a website and there's a lot of guesswork in there and there's a lot of trying to figure the thing out, the only thing it does is it actually makes me more frustrated than anything because me, like a lot of you, I value my time and I don't have all the time in the world to sit there and try to understand and try to learn a new software. It's just, it's demanding, it's exhausting. And the worst thing is, is that if I actually get to the end of the process just to find out that it wasn't what I hoped it would be, then I'm more frustrated than anything that I just wasted all that time. So what I've done is I've actually designed a service. I've worked very closely with my designers, with my developers on how to actually create a design and a UI for this business that actually is very simple to use. You could use it if you're 15 years old, you could use it if you're 85 years old. There's nothing complicated about it. We literally walk you through step by step and I'm gonna show you exactly why today we are the best travel planning service out there. So. Uh, let's begin with this is the landing page you go to planversity.com this is what's going to pull up now you can see right here that I'll hit you right off the bat with a booking option okay that's great we do have booking options so if you decide you want to come here and just get a plane ticket let's just say I'm flying from Philadelphia and I don't know let's just say anywhere I'm going to Austin Texas now I can just go ahead and do that I don't need an actual account to be able to sign up and do this or to be able to sign in and do this I can just pull this up you can see there's all sorts of options here I can start filtering by price stops uh, you know there's, there's durations right there there's a few options but if you decide that you're not here for any kind of booking options or hotels trains or anything like that and you just want to go straight to travel planning well that's simple you just follow this link right here skip and go direct to planning or you can go to sign in so if I click this what's gonna do is pull up the sign in page simple enough if you have an account you just sign in if you don't have an account yet you just click right here on the sign up if you need to get into any of our other things you know you're interested in becoming an affiliate of course the links down here planverse magazine if you want to uh check out our our site map for any reason or if you want to contact us all that information is down here okay and of course, if you want to do the blog, anything like that, uh, read about us, see what it costs, the travel booking page, that's all right up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. I'm actually using my own personal account here today to walk through the process. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to treat this video, this recording, as if it's me actually jumping on here to plan a trip to go somewhere, okay? Um, some of the few things I'll explain for you when you come to the dashboard is as soon as you sign in now just take notice I do have an admin account so there's gonna be a few extra features in this account for me that you won't have but you won't have to worry about that we're not going to show you any of those features today that's all for me that's anyone who's actually behind the scenes kind of working on the service you're not gonna see that today but what you will see that's different from an individual account is I actually have a business suite so one of the things that's different about the business suite is these features right over here on the sidebar so if you have an individual account you won't see the meetings you won't see the employees and you won't see the jobs you'll still see the home the events billing archive and travel booking it's just these features that are useful to a business you won't have to worry about seeing at all okay the settings won't change you can change uh, here or enable Google Calendar if you are interested in linking this information every time you create a packet if you want to link that to Google Calendar that's that option right there and if you're anyone outside of the United States and you decide that the 
metric system is more helpful to you, you just click right here, metric, that'll shut the imperial measurements off. Piece of cake. Now you're reading everything in kilometers versus miles. It's easy as that. Um, the calendar feature, so right here you can see we have it narrowed down to trips, events, and meetings, or all. What that does is it's a discriminator. So if I'm a business and I'm creating a lot of events, I'm creating a lot of meetings, I'm creating a lot of trips, well, my calendar might become congested at some point and I can go ahead and actually, I'll try and show you. So right here is where I have some trips lined up. Now these are just test trips because just like, uh, like any business, I wanna test my business and just make sure everything's always working. So a lot of times I'll go in and I'll create test package just to make sure everything looks good and right here you can see this is what the calendar looks like when it has uh, trips lined up okay now if I had events you'd see yellow lines if I had meetings you'd see red lines and eventually this could become very congested if it's not very congested it's fine just turn on everything if you want trips off and you want just events on just click on events I don't have any events lined up for the month of June, July, or August, but if I did, that's what you would see here. If I had meetings, you'd see red. I don't have any meetings lined up, but if I have trips planned, then you'll see that right here in the calendar. And you can see right here, I have a test packet. I road trip to grandma's house that I created earlier, and that's right here. Now, the reason in this section that you'll actually see the... Uh, the download versus the incomplete is a download means that the trip plan is actually or the pack has actually been completed. If it says incomplete right here and it doesn't have a download but it has an open, it's because I've gone ahead, I've started the process, I just haven't finished it. So if you're ever using the service and you have a disruption in your power, the computer goes off, you just close the window without thinking about it, there's nowhere to save on here. You don't even have to worry about saving. We automatically save that data for you. So if you go ahead and you create something you start something, you get three quarters of the way through the process and you happen to close the window, your computer dies, something like that, you don't have to worry about it. That information is always saved right here for you. So you can come back in, pick up where you left off. Now, if I go ahead and I create a trip and it expires, so right here you can see September 3rd is part of the upcoming. If that expires and all of a sudden um, it's gone from this list, it's not a problem. You can still pull it up in the archives. All of your past trips and events will all be saved right there. They're never going to be deleted. So if you ever find that you have 20 trips and you want to access something from two years ago, three years ago, whatever, it's always going to be in there for you. And we love having these features, okay? What I try to do is I try to create a service that's as user-friendly as possible. I care about my customers. I don't want them to have a service that is difficult to use, that we make everything so convoluted. We try to charge you for every little thing. I try to give you an affordable service that's very high in functionality, that's very useful, practical, pragmatic, you name it. That's what I want to do for you. So let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and if I want to start a new trip. So let's just say today, Eric is deciding I want to take a cross country road trip from Wilmington, Delaware to I'm just going to say uh, Denver. Denver would be a good one. It's pretty much straight across. So if I want to take a road trip, I just go in here. I select start a new plan and the service, like I said, very easy to use, very intuitive. It just walks you through the process. Okay. So I don't have to do a whole lot of guesswork. And if I ever want to say, hey, grandma, go ahead and, you know, organize your trip using this service plan adversity, I don't have to sit there and worry if uh, grandma's going to be able to figure it out or not. Because I'm telling you, it's so simple to use that you're going to see as I walk through this process, there's really no part about it that's like, oh man, how do I use this? I don't really understand how to use this. If there's ever a feature on here that seems difficult to use, just playing around with it, you're gonna figure it out quickly. If you can't figure it out, I would just say, write us, send us an email, say, hey, love the service, but this feature right here is a little difficult on how to understand it. I don't get how to use it. Can you explain it a little bit more? And it's feedback like that that causes us to go into the system and say, hey, look, you know, this is good, but we could probably design it a little bit easier to use just doing this or moving this here or taking this feature away or adding this feature over here. You know, we depend on customer feedback to make it better for you. So let's just say uh, this is me. I'm designing it. But if I was grandma or grandpa and I didn't know technology, I'm not that great with technology. I just come in here a piece of cake. I want to take a road trip. So obviously I'm going to select buy vehicle. Now, if I made a mistake and I actually meant to uh, say I wanted to take a flight or I wanted to take a trip by airplane, I could just change it right here. Same thing with train. Now, obviously, I mean to go vehicle, so I'm going to stick with that. 
uh, one of the easiest things to do right here is we just walk you right through the process. And just so you have an idea of how far along this is, we gave you a progress bar right up here. So it's not like an endless process of continuing to put in data and not knowing where the end is, all right? So if I come here and we're gonna hit you right away with the questions, we're literally asking you everything that we need in order to put your packet together for you. So it's your information, our process, we're combining those two things to give you a good product, all right? So I come here and the service immediately asks me if I need to book a car or if I just wanna go straight to planning. If I need to book a car, I just click that. It's gonna pull up uh, carrentals.com. It's gonna give you that option to book a car through them. If not, and I say, nah, just take me straight to planning, I select that, I go next, look at that. We're already 15% into the process. Now, I said I wanna to go to Denver, so I probably, I'm in my 40s now, I don't wanna go straight across. I like my sleep and I like limiting the time that I'm actually in the car for the day. So I might say, yeah, I'm going to knock out this trip eight hours at a time, 10 hours at a time, 12 hours at a time, whatever, but I'm not making that whole trip in one drive. Okay. So instead of going from A to B, now I want to do multiple stops. I go ahead and let's just say I'm going to be leaving from Wilmington, Delaware right here to, I'm going over to Denver. Go ahead and select that. Now what the service is gonna do is the service is saying, hey, cool, he just gave me some information or she just gave me some information. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that routing right here. So you can see just going from Wilmington to Denver, that's a day and two hours, depending on how far you drive or how far you wanna drive in one day. If you're going straight there and you're doing the speed limit, according to Google, it's telling you this is gonna take you one day and two hours, all right? 1,724 miles, I really don't wanna do that one trip. So I wanna add a few trips in there, right? Let's go ahead and expand this again. The services confirm my route. The only thing I do here is I go ahead and put in my dates. Now let's just say, uh, we'll keep it pretty well squared off. I'm gonna leave on the 15th of September. I'm gonna get there and let's just say it's gonna take me two days to get there. So I'm gonna arrive on the 17th. I'm gonna leave at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm gonna get there sometime around 5 p.m. All right, that's just, what I'm saying, it doesn't have to be accurate. Now, if you have accurate information on a road trip, by all means, put that in there. But really the reason why we have these time blocks in here is for you to be as precise as possible. Some people like to organize the heck out of all the information. Other people are like, I don't really care about the times. I just care about the dates. That's fine too. You can do that. Uh, now, if I say I want to come back, we'll just say I'm going to leave on the 30th and I'm going to be back probably around October 2nd. That's cool. Same thing. I'm just going to leave at 8 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to get back at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, if you put in 5 o'clock, if you want to do uh, you know U.S. time, that's fine. If you want to do 24-hour time, you can actually do that as well the service will pick that up. All right, now I say I wanna take a road trip, right? And it asks me right here, everything's lined up for you. When are you departing? When do you plan on returning? Where do you wanna stop on your journey? And I say, okay, well, the first stop I wanna take is, uh, or make is gonna be in, what's a good distance? Indianapolis, we'll say I'm gonna stop in Indianapolis for my first stop. My arrival date there, I said I'm gonna leave on September 15th, so I'm gonna get there on the 15th. I'm gonna leave the next day on the 16th, so I go ahead and put that information in there. And now I wanna add another stop, right? Because maybe I want it to take two days to get out there. So my next stop, we'll say somewhere a little bit further along the way, I'm gonna stop in Kansas City, Missouri, all right? And that's gonna be about September 16th, and I wanted to be to Denver on the 17th, so I'm gonna be leaving the morning of the 17th right there piece of cake, right? So you can see the map keeps uh, jolting in the background. It's because it's updating that information, but don't worry, we'll get to that. I click next, look at that. I'm over halfway through the process. Do I wanna add some hotel, uh, hotel details? Again, super easy to use. I don't wanna add any hotel details, but if I did wanna do that, I just select yes, and then it just gives me all these prompts to put in the information. If I say no, it's a piece of cake. I just move on to the next step. Same thing with car rental details. Do I need to rent a car? If I say yes, it'll say, hey, do you need to book a car or not? I could say no and just enter my car information. If I come back up here and say no, not a problem. I move along, look at that, we're almost done. Now, if I wanna add a plane portion or a train portion, that would be, do I wanna drive all the way out to Denver and take a flight back to Wilmington? I could do that, that's where I would say yes. And if I say yes right there, it asks me, okay, do you wanna take a flight? Do you wanna do a train? How do you wanna do this? If I say no, I don't need any of those things, piece of cake, 
I select next. Now I'm at the end of the process. Now what this is asking me is go ahead and go into the process or go into the map, confirm your routing, and it looks good to me. Look at that. I leave from here. I'm stopping in Indianapolis day one, stopping in Kansas City day two, day three. I'm already in Denver. Now I can click this route and I can adjust it. So let's just say, you know, I, I, I want to go a little bit out of the way. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to take this road up here. And if I want to go down to, let's just say to get to Kansas City, I'm going to take the long way and I'm going to come down through here. And well, I don't really want to go up this way, but let's just say down here, I decided I want to make that trip. And I'm like, nah, you know what? Better off not to take that. You don't have to go through the process to start it all over again. If you want to undo something, you just undo last change right there and it's a piece of cake now if i want to undo everything i just sit there i just keep clicking undo and now we're back to scratch uh back to square one now if i want to come in here and i say okay i do want to actually keep this process right here i want to keep that turn that's not a problem i do that if my route looks good to me i just go ahead and save that we're back to this page now i'm ready to go the system says awesome you are on your way so i continue through my itinerary now you can see up here everything is lined up so i went ahead and built my itinerary now it's literally going to walk me through all these steps okay uh if i want to just create a schedule i'm going to say um i'm going out to visit friends in denver so if i want to say on day one in denver i want to uh go get coffee with friends oops all right now excuse me if i uh, misspell something from time to time but so let's just say the day i get out there on that monday morning at nine o'clock oops oh boy here we go zero nine o'clock on that day i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna get coffee with my friends i click save boom there it is that information let's just say uh visit the zoo with friends that's going to be awesome. I'm going to do that. And now I can say, okay, well, that day is going to be on the 20th. We're going to do that at uh, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. And boom, click save. There it is. Now, there's no limit to how many entries you can put in here. If you want to build a schedule, you know, with 20 different entries, you can go ahead and do that. If you want 10, you can put 10. If you just want one or two, you can put two. And if you just want to skip the process altogether, you just skip right here. But let's just say we're going to leave it at this. I add a few things. Now, this is where if I actually select Google Calendar, it'll send me that notification. If, as long as I've had that selected, it'll send me an email with those and then I just link them to Google Calendar. So now I have these entries in Google Calendar, which is awesome, right? If we're done here, we just go ahead, finish next step. So literally, there's nothing on here that seems difficult to understand. I explain right here, or the process explains right here why you would want to create a timeline. It's got the calendar, which is pretty easy. You're adding event names, you're adding the times, you're saving the event. If I want to edit, I can edit right here. If I want to just delete that entry altogether, I can do that. If I want to skip, I skip right here. And if I'm done with this step, I just click finish next step and I'm on to the next thing, notes. Now, I'm just gonna keep it easy here. And I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, you could see that my route was originally around 1700 miles. I did add this little portion right here and you could see that it actually updated. It gave me an extra three hours and it updated by almost 200 more miles. So a little bit out of the way, but that did update that information. So, um, and at any point you can minimize this to kind of take a look at the map. If you don't have any need, don't need to do that, not a problem. So just to throw some entries in here, just to kind of show you some examples, we'll just go ahead and I'm just going to click these and I'm just going to add those just so you can see how the process works. If I just want to add things on my own, uh, don't forget to buy tickets to whatever. It doesn't really matter. I just add that information. Again, it's just like the calendar or the schedule. If you want to add entries, 20 entries, 10 entries, it doesn't really matter how many you want to put. Add as many as you want, add as few as you want. If you want to skip this section altogether, you can. If you want to edit something, it's right here. If you want to delete it, it's right here. But this is what this process is for. And if you want to see, hey, why do I need to add notes? Well, you don't need to add notes. Notes are helpful. You know, notes are those things. Anytime I travel, and especially if there's something that I don't want to forget, or if there's some piece of information, let's just say, I need to know when to pick something up. I need to know where to pick something up. I need to add that information in there. You can put all that information right here.
All right. If I'm done with this step, I just go ahead and I click finish next step and this is going to take me to filters next. And once I get to filters, so filters is awesome. Filters has to do with resources, right? So I said I want to go to Denver and now this is a process where if you want to know about resources in that area, like if you want to know pharmacies, you want to know where hospitals are, you want to know where police stations are, you know, in the United States, these things aren't necessarily uh, as important as they would be if you're going overseas. If I'm going overseas, a lot of times I do want to know where that information is. I want to know where hospitals are and pharmacies are and ATMs are. That information is important to me, especially COVID testing stations. If you're unvaccinated and you want to return back to the United States, there's a requirement to make sure that you get a positive COVID test. But um, the way to use this is you can pretty much figure out how to use this. Just coming here, I know already, hey, look, I can select facilities. If I want to come down here, the only thing I need to do is build a little radius around here. All right. So I go ahead and I can use this scale right here. Again, remember I picked Imperial. If I picked the metric system, then this would be reading in kilometers. So I said, all right, I want to know where everything is within one mile. And if those things that I want to know where are right here, this list right here, I say, hey, I want to know everything within a mile of my destination. And I want to know where the hospitals are. So I go ahead and select hospitals. Boom, there's a few right there. COVID test stations, those are important to me as well. Uh, universities, if there's a university there, oh, I didn't want universities, I go ahead and deselect that. Maybe I want parks, you know, and there you have it. Those will drop there. Now, if you ever want to go in and just verify that these are accurate, I just zoom in on the map and I say, hey, look, there's a little park. Well, I can see that's right next to a little piece of grass. Go ahead and click on that. It tells me, boom, there's your park. Uh, COVID testing station, I want to know what that is. I select that, boom, there it is. All this information is lined out for you, okay? And this is not Planiversity providing this information. This is Google. This is just like any other service you would use. This information is verified through Google. So uh, universities, any kind of educational centers, same thing, police stations, if I want to know where those are, I select those and all this information is verifiable right there. Okay, so let's just say I'm done. Uh, I've got all the information that I want. I'm gonna be staying in this district right here. If I was staying up here, then the system would know that because I would have put that address in, but I just left it very basic and just said, I'm going to Denver. All right, so this is the information I want. If I want the weather at Denver from when I'm gonna be there, I just select weather. If I want driving directions, now that's the other thing that's kind of exciting. I can just go ahead and select driving directions. The system already knows how I want to get there. Okay, so I say, well, I want to go this way. Now these are just suggested routes. You've already decided, I want to go this way. I want to take this road. I want to go this way. But if you want driving directions out there based on what Google would give you, now, Google is not controlling the map like you are. You're controlling the map. You can say at any point, I want to go this way. But what we're doing is we're giving you suggested routes from Google. So if you want driving directions and you say, hey, look, I'm, I plan on going out there. Uh, I need a few options. Boom. We say, hey, look, here's a few suggested routes. If you want to take this way, you take this way. If you want to take that way, you take that way. And you can see it gives you the difference right here and what the mileage would be, what the timing would be based on speed limits and everything else. However, Google actually verifies that information. If you don't need any of this information, you say, you know what, I've already got my own way figured out. That's fine. You just go ahead and deselect directions. And now you've got all the information you need from this section. I go ahead. I select finish next step. Piece of cake. We're done. That section is awesome. Easy to use. Now we're at plans. So again, I'm in Denver. I love this feature because this allows you to actually build a comprehensive list of things that you actually want to do. So let's just say, um, what are a few things to do? Now let's just say, uh, what here is, uh, what we have here is we have the types of activities that you can do. So we've kind of narrowed it down and we will expand this in the future, but for right now, what we've said is you can discriminate what you want to put on the map based on whether it's a place to eat, a thing to do, or someone that you want to visit while you're out there. Now, that's a piece of cake. Let's just say step one, people to see. I want to visit my friend. So I'm going to visit my friend and I know that my friend, now obviously I'm just selecting anything on the map. doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say my buddy lives 
right there. So I go ahead and I say that, hey, look, there's his address right there. I go ahead and add. And now you can see the icon is locked in there. If I've made a mistake and I put down the wrong address and I say, oh, no, actually, my buddy lives down in Lakewood, that's easy enough. I just go in here to edit. Now, I can't do anything with this icon when I've already saved it, okay? I click on it. There's nothing I can do. But if I go into edit, I can go ahead. That icon starts bouncing. I just zoom in on the map and I say, oh, you know, I, I was actually supposed to drop this in Lakewood because that's actually where he lives. He just moved. I just grab the icon. I drag it down here to wherever his address is or her address is. I pop it right there. Address updates. I go ahead and update that. Now it's locked in. Once again, it's not bouncing and now you cannot move it. All right. So let's just do the same thing with, uh, hey, look, there's an In-N-Out burger. There's a place to eat. So let's just say, uh, get a burger, piece of cake, things to do, people to see. No, it's a place to eat. I'm going to go ahead and go to the In-N-Out Burger. Love the In-N-Out Burger, 150 South Wadsworth Way. There it is. You can just go ahead and add it like that. And now you have a place to eat that's actually locked in. Now, the last thing we have to select from is things to do. So I can say, uh, go to a park. And I'm gonna say things to do. Now, if there's a park that I know that I wanna go visit while I'm there, if there's somewhere, a museum, something that you wanna visit, uh, you can go ahead and select whatever it is. I'm gonna say I wanna to go to Ruby Hill Park. I've never been to Ruby Hill Park, but I wanna go visit Ruby Hill Park. I can see right here, there's the address. There's the address verified right there. I go ahead and add it and boom. Now you can see that I've just added a thing to do, a person to see, and a place to eat. I'm sorry, I got those backwards. But that's as easy it is to use. And if you can't figure that out, of course, you can always write us and we'd be more than happy to actually line this up. We also have a video on YouTube on how to use this feature specifically, but it's pretty straightforward. You add a title, you add the activity. Now, if I just add a name and I say, um, visit uh, another friend, all right? And I want to go ahead and add an address. So if I click right here and I say, boom, now it's telling me, hey, look, you got to select an activity. So there's really no way to get yourself boxed into an area where you can't figure out what to do. So I say I want to um, go visit another friend. Well, of course, the system is saying, hey, if that's what you want to do, you need to select an activity. So I say, OK, people to see my friend lives right up here. Cool. That's his, their address. I lock it in and there you can see we have another icon on the map. That is what the plans feature does. If I'm done with this, I just come on down to finish next step. And of course, at any point, if you want to go back to another step, you can either select the back button, which you'll see down here, or you can just click on the icon up here and that'll take you back to that step. A document section, pretty straightforward, right? If I want to add copies of any documentation, it's all right here and it's all broken down into specific lanes. So we have passports. If you want to add copies of your passports, have digital copies with you. If you want to add copies of driver's license, hotel itineraries, travel itineraries, additional documentation could be COVID test results. It could be visa paperwork. It could be invitations. It doesn't matter. That's up to you. You put all that information in. Now, you can add uh, PDF documents, you can add JPEG images, you can add pretty much any format that you want in there. And it doesn't matter if it's, uh, it doesn't really matter what format it's in. Um, and if it comes in a landscape versus portrait, the system will just kind of pre-align that for you. So ordinarily, you want to have it set to portrait mode. If it does come in landscape, it's just going to make it smaller. Still going to keep it in landscape, but it's just going to make it a little bit smaller because everything is lined up on the PDF export as portrait mode. Okay. So what I'm saying is you might not have it fully lined up like a portrait image would be, but instead it'll be a smaller square represented as landscape on a portrait size sheet of paper or a uh, slide. All right. So I don't, let's just say I don't have any travel documents to include. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip this section. It's going to bring me over to connect. Now, this is just a business suite feature. If I want to say, hey, look, uh, I'm the secretary, I'm building this plan for one of the employees and I just need to link it to them. I just come in here now I created a couple of uh, fake employees right there. But if I wanted to do that, so I would just say, hey, this is Bob Smith's trip. I have just planned it for him. If it's not for Bob Smith and, you know, I can just get rid of his name. But if it's for somebody else, then I could just select them. 
If you have a business suite and you add 30 employees, 50 employees, you'll see their names populate here when you add it to an employee. That's just one of the ways that we link this to an employee if you're a business. If you don't have an employee to link this to or if it's for you, then you just go ahead and skip this section. It's a piece of cake. And this is gonna bring us back to the final step. So if I was going somewhere overseas, the good thing about this is you can see right here, it says United States. So if it is in the United States, you won't get anything. But if this was overseas, you know, it might be Mexico, might be Germany, might be Italy, might be China. If there was any foreign country that you're going to, we'd actually give you a full listing of State Department um, warnings, security cautions, anything like that. If, you know, they want you to be aware of theft, if they want you to be aware of crime, increased crime, something like that. Or if there's just a State Department notice saying, hey, you know what? stay away from that country altogether that all would be lined up right here in this section but since we're going to the united states uh, it doesn't give you any information of course if i want any kind of traveler's insurance for this trip i can go ahead and follow this link right here and this will get me set up i recommend always having some kind of traveler's insurance especially if you're going overseas uh, if you don't have something that covers you in case of emergency medical obviously you want to look into that you know it's definitely worth it. Uh, you know, it's, I'd rather pay $50 up front for traveler's insurance to cover me on a two-week trip than pay whatever ridiculous amount to get myself out of a situation that I get caught in over there, especially if it's an emergency evacuation scenario, if it's a, uh, an injury, something like that, if it's a car accident that you have, you always want to make sure that you're covered. But for right now, I'm obviously not going to get that. And now the only thing I have to do is I have to name my trip. So let's just say uh, visiting. Okay, I can't type today. Visiting friends in Denver. Piece of cake. That's how I'm going to name my trip. Now, if I want to review that information, I just come in here and I say, oh, okay, uh, there's my reminders for the schedule. Uh, here's the notes that I put in there. Awesome. Everything's in there. I've got everything that I want. I just go ahead, finish, proceed. And now I just, if I don't want to do that, it's not a problem. I can just click proceed. That was right next to it. And the only thing it's going to do now is it's going to go into pulling all of that data. So one of the things I do recommend doing is if you're going to a place like New York City, Paris, any of these really big cities that are very densely congested, I would recommend limiting the amount of information that you put in there. So if I go to New York City and I set my, you know, my search radius on the filters page to, you know, five miles and I say, I want to know where all the parking garages are within five miles, that's obviously a lot of data. If I don't have that information or if I don't need that information um, to be that broad, then that's easy enough. I just change that back, all right? So one of the things that it's gonna tell you to do is uh, it's gonna tell you just to hold on and you're gonna be redirected back to the homepage. It'll go ahead and pull me up. So that's how the process works. Now, the only thing I need to do, and I'm gonna go ahead while this is compiling that data, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump back to the homepage because I just want you to see how it looks if you don't finish that process. So let's just say um, I close that tab. It tells me don't close the browser window because it's trying to save that information. If I went ahead and I accidentally closed that, it's not a huge deal. Um, it will actually populate in the, uh, the main page or back on the dashboard. So one of the things that I did was I just went back, I clicked the back button because I was hoping that it would actually trigger that and it would save that information without completing it, but it actually went ahead and completed it and I'll show you what it did. So let's go ahead and jump you back over here. Now you can see that I've gone ahead and I put in there visiting friends from Denver as the name of the packet and that's what you can see right here. So that's all ready to download. Um, if I want to verify the dates on that, I said I'm going to go in September. I pulled this up. Look at that. That one trip that I have, road trip to grandma's is in there. And then visiting friends in Denver is also in there. So um, I was hoping that if I disrupted the process of downloading that information, that I would actually see 
that show up as an incomplete packet because that's exactly what will happen. But it was actually too far along. It had already compiled that data, and that's why we have it now in the download status. So if I want to pull that information, I just simply click on the download, and what that does is that automatically downloads on your computer. I don't really need to see the download information, but if it's there or if you want it, it's going to be right there. It automatically downloads. It's not difficult to find. And of course, if I open that up, it pulls it up in a PDF document, and here it is. And you can see everything is pretty much lined up. It's got my itinerary lined up, my events, my notes that I put in there. Uh, I said I wanted to put in a couple plans, so visiting friends, get a burger, go to a park, visit another friend. All that information is in there. Awesome. All that detail, and there you go. There's your trip lined up. So. All this information is right there for you. It can be found right there on your dashboard. Again, it opens up as a PDF document and it's always available for you. So once I go ahead and I've passed this date, September 15th, this is gonna drop off of this column right here of upcoming and it's gonna drop into the archive. It's still accessible. You don't have to worry about losing it. And that's it. That's literally all there is to it. I couldn't, I couldn't put it any easier for you. I couldn't put it in any more simple terms for you. Let's just go ahead and uh, bring myself back up for you. So that is how to use Planiversity. Simple to use, it's very easy. It's very easy on the eyes. It's very easy to use. It's very user friendly. So if you think that you're somebody who's just not so tech savvy and it's just not for you, you've just seen right here that it is for everybody. It's simple to use. There's no difficulty to it. We literally walk you through the step, step or the process step by step. Couldn't be any easier. If you have any questions or you have any suggestions for us, I definitely recommend reaching out to us at plans at planadversity.com. We love hearing from everybody. Until then, I hope this helps. Thank you very much for your time and safe travels.